Okay, let's um, let's move on to 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 waves, sound, and light, and, and let's just recap some of the things that um, that we were talking about previously last year. We we had um, last year the the whole thing of um, waves undergoing reflection. Now we all see that in the mirror. You can also see it if you um, go to the beach and stand on the edge of a breakwater you'll see the waves coming crash and a wave going back out to sea. That wave, granted, it has been changed, but it has been reflected back out to sea. Right? So, in a reflection situation, we, we've just got to get a few little things down pat first before we, um, before we move ahead and, and, and look at some of the examples, because I want to look at um, refraction and diffraction and interference and all sorts of stuff like that. Let's have a look here and we say, right, um, we've got we've got our whatever we've got there, a mirror or a piece of metal or some surface that's going to reflect. We know that as we bring in a ray of light here, the ray of light reflects backwards. And when we look at it, we must be the ray of light coming in. Now, I don't mean that be the ray of light, but be the ray of light coming in. Look at it, and it always goes to, this is called the normal. Why? Because it's 90 degrees to the plane of reflection. So, here we've got, coming in, we've got the incident ray. Right? And here, going out, we've got the reflected ray. And you know that, let's call that I an R. Whoops, not an R with a dot. Let me just uh, get rid of that. Otherwise, we confuse it. There we go. Put that back. R. So, we've got angle of incidence, angle of reflection. And we know that for reflection, it's identical. The angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. In other words, whatever we come in with that, that's going to go out with the same thing. Right? Incidentally, if you had an object was sitting over here, it appears behind the thing at exactly the same distance back as it is in front. Okay? And that's done, comes from there, the reflected. That's not 100%, but just let's pretend it's okay. That is, in other words, as far in the front as far as behind. It's reflected about that axis, okay? Hence, in maths, obviously, we get the reflections about the x-axis that would have moved to the other side, okay? Well, that sums up um, pretty much what we did with regard to reflection, didn't it? Now, let's uh, take a, a different thing. We're now going to have a look at a different concept. We're going to look at the refraction. Okay. You know that light, light waves coming at us, let's say, from the sun. That's the source. Out there is the sun. They come to us and then they enter the Earth's atmosphere and then certain things happen to them. Well, You've, I'm sure, seen um, a prism, glass prism, where white light comes in and it goes through the prism and it comes out and it gets split into different colors. So we see the spectrum of visible light like that. That's one of the ways. The other way, obviously, is a rainbow. The same thing is happening. The light is passing through something and it's being split. Right? Now, if you look at the data sheets, you see the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, is in a vacuum, right? What it means is that, let us take, for example, a ray of light, and it's coming over here like this. It is incident on something, right? 
Now it's traveling over here at a velocity, right? It's the same as imagine yourself running on the beach. You're running at a certain velocity, let's say, on the beach will give you a direction. What happens when you come to the water? Okay, part of the fact you get wet, you get cold, whatever the case might be. What do we notice? We notice that we have changed from air to something else. So first of all, we've had a change in medium. That's what it's called. We have gone from air to something else over here. All right. Let us say we've gone from air to glass at that point. Now, what happens to you as you get to the water? The water appears to slow you down. Well, it does slow you down. Let's say it appears to be thicker than the air. There's more resistance to you running through the water than you would be running through the air. That increase in, let's say, resistance, that thick stickiness that you suddenly feel, let's suddenly say you have to start running through um, muddy water, very muddy, right? It's even thicker, so it slows you down more and it slows you down more, okay? So as you're going through and you're changing from one medium, from air to water, you get slowed down. From water to the muddy, thick water, you get slowed down. Uh, hypothetically, we put you through honey, you get slowed down even more. So the thicker the element you're running through or moving through, the more you get slowed down. Well, the same thing happens to light. It too gets slowed down in the process. So as we're moving, um, as light comes moving from air and it comes to glass, it slows down. Now you must have noticed when you put a, um, a, 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 um, a, so the thing of a swimming pool, right? You put the pool um, brush into the water, right? Here's our pool over here and we've got our brush. Let's say this is the side of the swimming pool, all right? And we rest the brush and there's our brush over there like that, resting on the floor. If you look at this from the side, I'm, I'm not an artist, okay, <laughs> really. So as you look at that on the side like that, you tend to see this thing bent. Have you noticed that? If you put a, um, a, a something in a, a glass of water, you tend to see it gets bent. What's actually happening here is that as this um, light ray is coming, I just want you to, to, to remove this... Uh, seriously poor art drawing as this light, uh, uh, ray of light is coming in it gets slowed down because it's moving from something which is thin to something which is denser right so it gets bent down like that now we've got angle of incidence i'm going to call that r over there okay what process is this now, this is the process called re refraction. It's this process of slowing down the light as it comes in to a thicker medium. Okay? And each one of these things is given a specific name. Well, N like that. It's given N <clears throat> is called the refractive index. Okay. Very often it's abbreviated as RI, right? Well, what does it mean? It's an indication of the thickness or the density of the material. Right? It's a relative term, okay? It doesn't have the units, it's just a single term in its own. Let's look at some typical um, values for N. Uh, optics. Here we go. Now, air, let's look, air, we give it a refractive index, Ri, okay? 
or little n of air is going to be um, 1.003. Okay, we normally call it 1. So air n is equal to 1. Then we've got ice. 1.31 for example. Uh, water. 1.33. Then we go um, an alcohol, 1.36. Plastic, 1.46. Perspex, 1.52. Glass, 1.52. Um, diamond is 2.42. Okay? Just some of the refractive index indices that um, that we use for the um, the calculations that we're going to do. So you could see that we could move from air to water to glass to diamond. We can go through a whole set of stuff, but let's just start with a simple one where we're going to go through um, air going into glass. You can see, we say that's coming in at, let's say, full speed, right? And it comes to something denser because glass has got an N equal to 1.52. So it is denser than that. So we have to say to ourselves, well, what happens here? Well, what happens under these circumstances is the following. Let's just move it up slightly, right, right. What happens is this, right? We say that you come along, there's our normal again, there's the angle of incidence, we get refracted towards the normal, right? We are slowed down. This R is angle of refraction, okay? Now, there's a, a, a law that we're going to discuss in, 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 in the session, which is Snell's law, right? which tells us it relates the angle, this angle and this, and it relates the refractive index. So this is, let us say, medium 1, and this is medium 2. You know that if they gave you a drawing that looked like that, the medium 1 must be less dense than medium 2. Why? Because it's gone from less dense to denser. It has slowed down, so it's refracted towards the normal. We could have gone out of this medium. We could have done it the other way. right? We could have had a ray coming up from uh, over here. right? And this ray would come up this way, and then it would be refracted away from the normal. Okay, let's think about it. Well, this is a beam of light coming out of a piece of, say, glass into the air. So as it comes, this is now the angle of incidence. This is the angle of refraction. The key to these is to work out which is the angle of incidence and which is the angle of refraction. Okay, the most popular problem of these is, is, is car keys at the bottom of a swimming pool, which is quite a cool problem. Because you can actually, you could actually work it out. You could go and do it physically at home. Um, I wouldn't drop car keys into a swimming pool. That's probably not a good idea. Think of something else. But what we have to say is we have to first of all say here we're coming from dense to less dense. So that's why it's refracting away from the normal. Okay. So as we come in from less dense to dense, we get refracted towards the normal. Okay. That's pretty straightforward, pretty simple, and the kind of calculations that you get are quite straightforward um, to do with it, right? How do we find this refractive index, this, um, this N? Okay, right? N is going to be equal to C over V. Well, this C here is always, it's the constant, it's the speed of light. This is the 
speed of light in the medium. Right? Okay, so whatever it's going to be. Let us say they say, all right, um, the refractive index of ice, let's say N for ice, is equal to 1,31. Calculate the velocity of light in ice. We say, okay, N of ice is that. What do we know? We know N. 1.31 is equal to 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second divided by V. Therefore, velocity is going to be equal to 2.29 times 10 to the 8. Okay, so it's actually slowed down quite a bit in ice, hasn't it? It's, it's yeah, it's slowed down quite a lot as it's gone through the ice. Okay, so this is the first one that we've got to remember in this series, okay? Because that relates the speed of light, the refractive index, and the velocity of the light in that substance itself. The next element that we've got to consider in this, um, in this one is going to be... Okay just go to page two okay is going to be um, where we're going to talk about um, Snell's law all right and we're going to talk about his law I'd rather cover that before I do that Snell's law states okay that n1 times or n i times sine theta i is equal to n r times sine theta r so okay okay whoa hang on what is all this about well first of all it's not as bad as it looks it's not as difficult as it looks what's it about it's this that n1 is n i rather is the refractive index this is going to be the r i refractive index remember of the incident medium. In other words, it's the refractive index of, if I'm coming this way, it's the N of the incident medium. Well, sine of theta, that's that angle over there. Theta of the incident. In other words, the angle of incidence. And theta r is the angle of refraction. N r is this one here. Because it's the refractive index of the refracted medium. Or refracting. So it's this one. So you can see that it's now relating the angles here. Theta r. It's relating... The refractive index, the angle, the refractive index, and the angle. So, if we know one, therefore, we know the other. Right? So, just in this element, we're looking at the rays coming in, the incident ray, and it comes in, the angle of incidence is to the normal, right? It's coming in from the one medium to the other medium. These are the buzzwords they use in this section, right? That it's a medium. This one has got a refractive index which indicates how dense it is, how difficult it is for the light to go through it, right? In other words, it's going to slow it down. So if this comes is a 1 on top and it goes to something 1.3, it slows down like you suddenly might moving through a thicker substance. You slow down, right? And if we slow down, we get bent towards the normal. Why? We are slowing down. So we're losing, conceptually, we are losing energy. We can't get through it fast enough. So we go down. Then we go, we plow through this, and say we come out to the other side of the air, we can suddenly accelerate and we can get back to our normal velocity. Okay? The last part of this is the, the Snell's law, where we're going to come back and do some examples of this. We're going to look at it with regard to... Um, 
total internal reflection. We're going to look at um, the issues of, of apparent depth of things, where they really are in a tank, etc., etc. That we're going to do in the next section with some examples. Mm -hmm.